uncover the real extent of the destructive power of the RPG-7 in this gripping video. Delve into the details of just how deadly this iconic weapon can be and gain a deeper understanding of its impact. Stay tuned to witness the explosive capabilities of the RPG-7 in action and learn why it remains a formidable force on the battlefield. This analysis will leave you in awe of the sheer devastation this weapon is capable of causing. Watch now to learn more about the lethal potential of the RPG-7. The anti-tank grenade launcher RPG has been and remains one of the most common and effective infantry weapons in both past and contemporary conflicts. Today, this rocket launcher has become a legendary weapon known worldwide, favored by certain armies, rebel groups, and terrorist organizations. You've probably seen its use in the destruction it can cause in news reports, movies, or video games. The reason it continues to be used in such an advanced age is that the RPG, in its various variants, remains highly lethal, inexpensive to produce, and easy to use. Consider this, a tank or armored vehicle worth millions of dollars can be destroyed by a projectile costing less than $500. That's impressive. In this video, I aim to show you concretely, with examples, just how lethal this weapon can be against humans, vehicles with and without armor, and even tanks and helicopters. We won't focus on Hollywood myths or exaggerations, but rather the complete truth about the power of this legendary weapon. Get ready to learn everything about the RPG. So, let's start with a bit of history. During the Vietnam War, there were numerous reports that Viet Cong soldiers used RPGs to practice shooting at water buffaloes. In most cases, these buffaloes ended up torn apart. Remember that the RPG travels at a speed between 100 and 300 meters per second, relatively slow in ballistic terms. Because of this, and because human flesh is soft, it's unlikely to provide the resistance necessary for the RPG to detonate, as it would against a solid concrete wall. Perhaps if the projectile hit a bone, it could detonate, although the bone would likely break without offering sufficient resistance to trigger detonation. The size, shape, and speed of the projectile prevent it from passing through a person completely, so it is likely to get stuck. This is not speculation. In 2013 in Afghanistan, a US soldier was directly hit by an RPG-7 rocket. The projectile impacted and lodged in the soldier's hip without detonating. He was carefully evacuated to an advanced surgical base, where doctors worked to save his life and remove the projectile. They succeeded, but this is not an isolated case. Multiple incidents have been recorded where an RPG lodged in a soldier's abdomen or leg without detonating. One aspect rarely discussed is that improper storage or aging of RPGs can cause these weapons to fail to detonate as designed. What would be the result of using an RPG to destroy a vehicle with and without armor? The answer depends entirely on the type of warhead used. The heat warhead, high explosive anti-tank, can penetrate up to 750 millimeters of conventional armor and 500 millimeters of reactive armor on flat terrain. Typically, it only manages to penetrate 300 millimeters of conventional armor. Attacking an unarmored vehicle with a heat warhead would eliminate all occupants and render it completely unusable. It is reported that Nicaraguan dictator Anastasio Somoza de Bale was taken down with multiple M16 rifle shots and finished off with an RPG-2 projectile. The dictator's vehicle ended with its entire roof destroyed. A vehicle with level 4 or 5 armor according to NIJ certification, levels used in diplomatic armored cars and military tactical vehicles, could potentially mitigate some of the RPG's power, although occupants would not emerge unscathed. Any vehicle with less than level 4 armor would be torn to shreds by an RPG projectile at close range. Things get more interesting when we discuss the effect of an RPG on a tank. The RPG's primary purpose upon its development was to destroy tanks. The effectiveness depends on the tank's armor thickness and the RPG projectile used. To destroy a modern tank more effectively, the impact would need to be at close range, 50 to 100 meters, and target the tank's weakest areas, roof and rear where the chassis or turret is located. RPGs are most effective in urban battlefields, where they can be positioned behind or above a tank and fired at close range at its vulnerable points. The U.S. Army faced this issue during the Iraq War and developed the Urban Survival Kit for tanks, which is equipped on some M1A2 Abrams tanks. This kit adds reactive armor on the sides and cage armor on the rear to protect against RPGs. However, even with these advantages, everything depends on the circumstances. In Iraq, several Abrams tanks were penetrated and destroyed by shots from the sides and rear. But in the same war, one Abrams tank took between 14 and 18 RPG-7 hits and continued to operate without issues. The T-90, a third-generation Russian tank, has armor thickness of 650 to 850 millimeters at the front, while on the side it ranges from 500 to 700 millimeters. 
This means a T-90 is practically invulnerable from the front to an RPG-7, but could be penetrated from the side and rear despite having advanced reactive armor. The infrared ATM interference system Stora would neutralize the RPG-7 if detected. Therefore, when discussing a modern tank equipped with reactive armor and active or passive protection measures, it would be nearly impossible for an RPG to destroy it. However, in tanks with lesser or older armor, the chances of destruction are quite high, especially at close range. Although the RPG was not originally designed to destroy helicopters, it can do so, as mentioned in another video titled, Five Firearms That Have Downed Aircraft. You can watch this video in the description. It's important to note that the RPG-7 is a direct fire weapon, meaning its battlefield effectiveness depends directly on the shooter's skill. It has no guided rockets, so where you aim is where the rocket goes. The weapon's major weakness is crosswinds. When aiming at a target at distances greater than 12 kilometers per hour, a shooter can't expect to hit more than 50% of the time beyond 180 meters. Additionally, they must calculate both wind direction and speed, which can significantly affect results. One of the most famous cases of an RPG downing an aircraft is the shootdown of two UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters in Mogadishu, Somalia, in October 1993, an event that inspired the movie Black Hawk Down. The RPG was designed to destroy moving tanks at a maximum speed of 80 kilometers per hour, but most military aircraft fly double or triple that speed. Therefore, multiple RPGs are fired simultaneously to increase the probability of downing a helicopter. During the Vietnam War, both the RPG-2 and RPG-7 were responsible for downing 128 American helicopters. Mujahideen fighters also downed Soviet helicopters with RPGs in Afghanistan. They found that the best tactic against helicopters was ambush, placing machine guns and RPGs around the landing zone. When the helicopter landed, massive RPG and machine gun fire rendered it completely useless along with its crew. They also found that a frontal shot against a helicopter at a distance of 100 meters was optimal to bring it down in motion. The Aerospace Industries Association reports that 40% of aircraft downed in Operation Enduring Freedom in Iraq were due to RPGs, and another 20% to small arms fire. Countering RPGs is challenging due to their typical short ranges and short reaction times. For example, manpads, guided missiles, can have ranges exceeding 5 kilometers and take about 3 seconds to impact a helicopter, giving the pilot time to react. However, an RPG launched from a rooftop at 40 meters away impacts in 250 milliseconds, without giving the pilot a warning. On average, the human eye takes between 300 and 400 milliseconds to complete a blink, meaning it's nearly impossible for a helicopter to dodge an RPG projectile at close range. Thus, the helicopter's distance from the combat zone is crucial in determining whether it will be shot down or not. A helicopter moving at over 100 kilometers per hour and at a distance of 900 meters or more is almost impossible to hit with an RPG. It's worth noting that there are armored helicopters like the AH-64 Apache, which have withstood 50 caliber, 20 millimeter caliber ammunition and RPG shots. The Apache could likely withstand an RPG attack in certain areas, as it has in the past though much depends on where the impact occurs. In summary, the RPG-7 is here to stay for many more years. As mentioned earlier, its cost compared to the damage it can inflict on multi-million dollar vehicles makes it a significant asset. The basic design of the RPG was developed by the Soviets shortly after World War II in the form of the RPG-2. During World War II, the Soviets were impressed by the performance and destructive power of weapons like the German Panzerfaust and the American Bazooka. Later in 1961, the RPG-2 was replaced by the RPG-7, which was supplied to the Soviet Army and deployed at the platoon level. Since then, nearly 9 million RPG-7 launchers and their variants have proliferated worldwide and on all continents, while Russian, Bulgarian, Chinese, Iranian, Iraqi, Romanian, and Pakistani manufacturing units abound. Many are produced locally. The RPG-7 is typically classified as a rocket-propelled grenade launcher, hence the name RPG, rocket-propelled grenade. The RPG-7 is particularly the most commercialized and recognized RPG platform in the world. It is 96 centimeters long, weighs 6.5 kilograms unloaded, and 8.9 kilograms when loaded with its 85 millimeter caliber projectile. Additionally, it has a firing rate of 4 to 6 rounds per minute. When an RPG is fired, it exits the barrel at 103 meters per second. In flight, the rocket deploys stabilizing fins as the projectile rotates towards a target. The conical shape of the RPG forms an outward jet of explosive energy when the projectile reaches its target, resulting in the armor penetration power of these weapons. This effect is known as the Monroe Effect. Before discussing how lethal an RPG can be, it's important to clarify two things. Firstly, there are multiple RPG variants. For example, the Soviets used three reusable launchers, 
the RPG-2, RPG-7, and RPG-16. Nowadays, there are more modern variants like the RPG-29 or RPG-32. It's also important to clarify that the effects of an RPG depend on the warhead. There are many different types of RPGs, from grenades to recoilless projectiles and rockets. Even within the RPG-7, there are fragmentation grenades, thermobaric projectiles, and even a skip-firing fragmentation projectile ideal for attacking enemies in open terrain. There are two main ways RPG projectiles create casualties, blast overpressure and fragmentation. The blast overpressure would probably not kill anyone except maybe the thermobaric version, which would be particularly lethal from 10 meters away. If this guy hit someone in the chest and detonated it, it would be safe to say all of its parts would scatter. In summary, the RPG-7 is here to stay for many more years. As we mentioned at the beginning, its cost compared to the damage it can inflict on multi-million dollar vehicles makes it a significant asset. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. What other military weapon or vehicle would you like to learn about its lethality? Subscribe and hit the powerful notification bell. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram where there's great content every day. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.